a reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a burnt offering on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the burnt offering, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servant, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried a fire and a knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, he said, Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the burnt offering. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. <coughs> Next he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on a boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it, on, offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. Ab Abraham named the site Yahweh Yuri, since hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Abraham then returned to his servants, and they set out together for Bathsheba, where Abraham made his home. <laughs> I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, because of your kindness, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, Where is their God? Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold the handiwork of men. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. Their maker shall be like them, everyone who trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. He is their help and their shield.
Christus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Matthäum. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Verbum Domini. Praise to be Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. Imagine that young girl, 11 years old, a child who grew up in a household that was filled with poverty and pain. Her father died only two years before her death when she was nine. So poverty-stricken was Maria Goretti's family that they had to inhabit a house with another family who took advantage of them financially. She was the third of six children. And one day, as she was mending a shirt for the man who would become her assailant and killer, and while she was watching her young uh, uh, infant Sister Teresa, that man with evil intentions broke in upon her and wanted to force her to do what she knew would be a mortal sin. And so she told him that. And when she would not cooperate with his bad intentions, he stabbed her to death 14 times in the neck the chest, and the abdomen. Maria lived for another 20 hours, and during that time, she forgave her assailant, her murderer, and she wanted him to be, as she said, in paradise with me. What a child, huh? And we think of those words from the prophet Isaiah, and a little child shall lead them. Do not miss the little ones in the midst of the church, because they're the ones who will show us the way. Huh? We've seen it over and over again with the children of Fatima, with St. Bernadette, with St. Therese, with Blessed Carlo Acutis, and so many others. They who at their young age knew Jesus Christ and loved him with their whole heart and soul, some of them even to the shedding of his blood. Today in the first reading, we hear that wonderful story of Abraham and Isaac. Abraham goes to offer sacrifice to the Lord and brings the wood, brings the knife, and they go up the hill, and Isaac says to his father, we have these things, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? He doesn't know that he is to be the lamb. But at the last moment, God provides the lamb. It's a foreshadowing of what God would truly do for each and every one of us. He provided the lamb for sacrifice 
in his son Jesus, who likewise walked up the hill of Calvary and embraced the wood of the cross. It's an amazing story, not just because it's a story, but because it's the absolute truth. How much God loves us that he would do that for us. Today in the gospel, Jesus encounters this poor man who is paralyzed, lying on a stretcher. And Jesus says to him, when he saw the faith of those around the paralytic, courage, child, your sins are forgiven. And at that, the scribes said to themselves, the man is blaspheming. And Jesus says, why do you harbor such evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. And he heals the paralytic. Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He can do both because he is God. My dear friends, in our own lives, we are called also to offer our sacrifices. Maybe not as dramatic as dear St. Maria Goretti, that beautiful child who shone with virtue and who chose a martyr's death rather than sin but maybe in little ways every day, because our whole life is a sacrifice of love to God over and over again. And to miss that is to miss the real meaning and purpose of life itself, and to miss the love that God pours out upon us through the precious blood of his son, Jesus. When we get paralyzed ourselves because of sin or fear or circumstances of life, let's remember St. Maria Goretti, who said, I choose love. I choose life, eternal life. I choose Jesus Christ. Rather than sin, I choose eternal life through the mercy of God. And when we are sometimes afraid of the sacrifice that Jesus asks of us, let us remember that we too are called to walk up the hill, huh? We're too called to walk up the hill and to be united with the passion of our Lord. For in and through him, we can do all things because love never fails, because his precious blood always saves, and because we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, among whom is little Maria Goretti, maybe little in the eyes of the world, but great in the eyes of God. We ask our brothers and sisters, the saints, to pray for us. And today, let's also remember the little ones in their midst. St. Bernadette, pray for us. St. Therese, pray for us. St. Maria Goretti, pray for us. Saints Jacinta and Francisco Mardo, pray for us. Venerable Sister Lucia Fatima, pray for us. Blessed Carlo Acutis, Pray for us and obtain for us the grace to be united with the one saving sacrifice of Jesus Christ that is made present on the altar every day when we come to it. Because it is the most important thing we ever do in life to come and to be united with the outpouring of God's love and mercy and grace made present in the sacrifice of his son. It's a pretty good deal, isn't it? It gives us meaning and purpose for our lives. And it tells us that no matter what path we may have to walk through life, whatever difficulty we face, if we do it united with Kim, 
we can do anything. We can look to St. Maria Goretti and say, and a little child shall lead them. And so, dear St. Maria Goretti, lead us on. Praise to be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.